What's up, people? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Welcome back to Get Straight To It podcast. We are live with Servant. Uh, right here, again, live and direct. And we're live on all platforms that we go live from. So, what's up, people? How y'all doing? Uh, let me get this back up. Boom. So, we're going to open up in prayer, of course. And then try to figure out what's going on right here. We're just going to get to it. Sorry. It ain't showing right here. So let me see. Let me make sure everything's good before we continue on. My bad. Everything good on that end? Yeah, I'm good, man. Everything good. I can hear you and everything. See? All right. Yeah, it's, it's showing now. All right. Okay. Welcome back to Get Straight to a Podcast. Live and direct with serving on the side of me right here. Well, on, on y'all side, probably be different. But man, uh, so let's get into prayer so we can get straight to it. We're a little bit a little bit late, you know, 10, 10 minutes past seven, but it's all good. We're going to get to it. We're going to have a really good time. So uh, Father God, right now we come to you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this divine appointment that you have set aside for me and brother servant right now to, to get straight to it, Father, as he shares his testimony. Father, I ask that you open up the hearts and the ears of those that need to receive it, Father God. We glorify you for this time, this divine appointment. We come against any kind of distraction right now that's trying to come against the podcast, come against the areas that we're in, Father God. We ask that right now, Father, you bind the hands of the enemy, and 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 in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 bro. Man, bro, um, uh, introduce yourself a little bit to the people. Let them know who you are. What's going on, uh, everybody? Uh, my name is Anthony Willis. I go by The Servant. Um, I'm from, I was born in Lafayette, Louisiana, small town, uh, bounced around a lot when I was little, uh, ended up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Then I ended up moving to Houston at the age of uh, nine years old. I've been out here for like 20, almost 20 years. So yeah, man, uh, that's really, that's really about really uh, the basics about me, um, if we're going into my testimony, you know, um, what, what what brought you what brought you out here to Houston before we dive into the testimony? Well, um, actually, my mom, I have no family out here in Texas. Like my whole family is in Louisiana. Like most of them are in a small town called Lafayette um, yeah. in New Iberia, St. Martinville, that area. But um, yeah, most of but my, I have no family out here. My mom, she basically moved out here because. One of her best friends had moved out here to Houston and okay. she she had a good life going. So my mom, she was, you know, my dad, he was real abusive. So her and my dad ended up splitting up, you know, getting a divorce and all that. And so my mom just wanted a fresh start. So she moved to Texas, you know what I'm saying? And this is before Hurricane Katrina or anything like this. This okay. is back in 19, this is back in 1999, 2000, bro. So okay. it was like earlier, you know what I'm saying? Before, so. That's really it. You know, my mom, she she knew that Houston or Texas would be better for us overall. So that's why she decided to move out here. We, we could jump smooth into your testimony and people going to be blown away. Cause I know I was blown away. I thought she was like 20 years old, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm 30. I'm 31, bro. I just, my yeah, birthday was in December. My birthday was in December. So I just turned 30. Well, what yeah, man. I'm, my birthday's in December too, December 16th. Yeah, mine's the 15th. So yours the day Damn, after my love. <laughs> That's crazy. Right. <laughs> you All know right. what's even crazier about that? My little brother, his birthday is actually the day before mine. And oh, he's wow. a year younger than me. Yeah. yeah. And it's wild, man. It's crazy. It, it, it was hard, pocket. bro. It was hard. My pocket in December. <laughs> what? It was hard, yeah, bro. We can dive into your testimony, bro. What what brought you to Jesus? What you know, when did you decide you needed to come? Well, to um, me? honestly, my mom, she always like had faith. She always saw her. Uh, you know, in her Bible, listening to sermons, um, giving to the church, going to the church. But my mom, she she really wasn't like all that stable, like mentally, mostly. Right. And uh, so she had a lot of inconsistencies in her behavior. And, you know, just being an example, she was the only mom, mom of five boys. I got four brothers, you know what I'm saying? So wow. watching her having to do all of this by herself, it, it was it was hard for her, bro. It's not easy raising five yeah. kids period, especially five boys, one woman, you know, so she struggled a lot, but she did her best, bro. And uh, she set that faith example for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
when I was real young, my it was real bad because my, my mom and my dad, they used to fight a lot, bro. Like abuse, knives coming out. Like we I remember we were going to battered women's shelters. And this is all before the age of eight or nine. Like this yeah. is when I'm really young. And um yeah, my uh so my mom, she was always a a a a, a Bible believing woman though. And yeah. uh, you know, so she would always pray, you know, whatever. And uh so that was my my initial foundation. But when we moved to Houston, my foundation as far as life was real rocky, bro. Cause right. when, when we moved out here, we moved in with somebody. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have our own place. And so we did that for a minute. Then we got our own place for a while, maybe like a year or two. And then we ended up going to a homeless shelter called Star of Hope. It used to be downtown Houston, but they moved it to the south side. So we go there and I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm like in the fourth i'm gonna say third fourth grade you know it's, wow. it's a shock to me you got kids at school making fun of you because they know you live in a shelter because your bus your bus pulls up in front of the shelter to drop you off right so right. kids already know where you're living at like they make it are you a shelter kid woo, woo. so i kind of that's where i started kind of getting a chip on my shoulder i started getting into fights just right. us being poor my mom not being able to really take care of us like we ended up going to a shelter two more times after that you know and it was rough. It was rough for me, bro. I ended up going in the fifth grade. Then I went back in the seventh grade. And then we ended up going back when I was in the ninth grade in high school. But uh, luckily, I was able to stay with my uncle and I didn't have to go back. So right. having that. So my, my home life was real unstable, bro, like really unstable. Like we would stay. I went to four elementary schools, three middle schools and two high schools. So wow. we moved around a lot. Yeah. And uh, my aunts, I had I had. But, I had, I had I had some aunts though, or adopted aunts who came into my life as a young guy, and they basically like took tried to come in and help me and my brothers or help my mom out with us. Right. And so I I was going to this church called uh, the Rock, mm -hmm. Pastor Dr. Dana Carson. I grew up there, man, powerful church, powerful man of God, man. Um, and so I grew up in church, bro. Needless to say. I grew up in church. I was all my aunts, they worked for the pastor. So I was almost like right there. But when I would go home with my mom, I'm living in the streets. I'm living in the hood. I'm I'm living in A-Leaf. You know what I'm saying? Like A-Leaf is is especially back at that time, bro. It was it was treacherous, bro. Like it, they call it the SWAT. It was yeah. horrible, bro. Like it was bad. And so I would be in church a lot, but when I get home, I'm going to school. I'm surrounded by gangs. It was to the point where everybody around me was in a gang, bro. Like, except right. me and my brothers at the age of 13, 14. And so that's when I started getting affiliated with gangs because it felt like we was the eyeballs out. Like, right. yeah, you ain't as tough as me, but you tough. You you feel like you're tough because you got a gang behind you. And it's yeah. just me and my little brother. You know what I'm saying? So it right. was, it was, it was, it was really like, you know, it was, it was, it was a weird thing, bro. Like it was just rough, bro. And you know, we grew up poor as well, you know. So, yeah, man, I, I, that led me to getting into a lot of stuff, bro, like getting into games, getting into fights. I got affiliated at the age of 14. I started really banging at the age of 16. Um, but I really, the good thing, though, that really kept me, I was, I was smart in school. Right. So, bro, I would, I would get into fights and go to the principal's office and get off because it'd be like, not him, he's, he. He in he in AP classes. He in advanced classes. Like he right, ain't right. no way that he he doing all this. Like, and bro, I worked for this. I worked for the, the teachers. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how yeah. smart I was. Like I worked for the teachers. I was a student aide, so I was able to be like smart, but still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be street yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And so when I was in the when I was in the twelfth grade, though, things started coming to a head. I moved out of my mom's house at the age of seventeen. I started living with this female. Like, I thought I was grown. You know what I'm saying? I thought yeah, I was yeah, a yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody like, man, my mind nothing. But mind you, even though I moved out of my mom's house, I'm still going to high school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I moved out of my mom's house. But I was I was doing so much dirt at this point. It was crazy. At this time in my life, me and my friends used to like to steal cars and drive them. Like, we used to drive them around. Like, we'll be whipping a Range Rover around the hood, bro. Like, it's ours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we used to just compete. We used to pull up. We used to pull up in in a line, and we'll we'll check out. Everybody had their own stolen car. 
Somebody have a, a, a Toyota, a Texas Toyota edition, uh Toyota Tundra. Somebody have a Range Rover. Somebody have this car. Somebody have, and we'll just be, you know what I'm saying? And we'll be hitting licks in the cars. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we was just wilding, bro. We was, we, looking back, it was crazy. But when you in that, when you coming from nothing, when you in the hood, it's like, you just doing what everybody else doing. You going with right. the flow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing that really helped me get outside of that, bro, was going to jail. That was the only thing that took me from my environment and showed me, hey, bro, life is more to this than just that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So um, first time I went to jail, like I said, I went to jail for, <clears throat> I ran from some police in a stolen vehicle in Sugarland. I flipped the truck. I got out. I ran. Uh, and yeah, they was trying to hit me with like four felonies at that time. It was uh, evading arrest in a motor vehicle, which is a felony. Uh, larceny, burglar of a motor vehicle, and something else. Um, because like I said, we were we were just we used to hit cars, we used to hit houses, we used to do a raw, we was doing all kind of stuff, bro. So the laws had already known what type of stuff we was on. Luckily, bro, they didn't catch my co-defendant, so they couldn't really they they really couldn't hit me with too much. I ended yeah. up getting hit with the evading arrest and um. Uh, and they dismissed all the other charges. I ended up getting a 1244A, doing 10 months. Uh, and so I came home at the age of 18. Right. Right back in the streets, bro, again. At this time, I get shot. Oh, wow. Like, this time, I'm 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 packing pistols. Every It's like every time I went to jail, it would get worse and worse. Like, mind you, I didn't tell you, but when I got out at the age of 18, my mom, she moved back to Louisiana. Okay. So now we really don't have no family in Texas. Like my my uh my me and my brothers, we we like really living out here on the streets almost. So you, know you and saying? your brother stayed out here. Yeah. So we really like almost homeless. Like we really like cause she was our home front. Like we stayed with our mom, but when she left, we didn't have no family. So we ended up moving in with these females that we knew, me and my brothers, and we just trapping out of there. We we doing all kind of stuff, bro. We breaking into houses. That was my main thing that I that I would do though, was breaking houses. That right. was my main thing. Like I wasn't no dope dealer. I sold dope drugs for a little while, but it wasn't my thing. Cause yeah, I always felt like, why would I spend money to hustle and make more money when I can go just take it and then I I have more money than all y'all put together. Right. That was my logic when I was doing what I was doing. So that's what, that's what I was doing. You was doing the right thing. I knew I wasn't doing the right thing for sure, but I mean, when you. I feel like I was doing the easiest thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's that's for sure. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the right thing, but it definitely was the easiest thing to do. Right. You know? So you had conviction set in the whole time you were doing all this? Yeah, bro. Like, I'd be praying. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I would even go to church. People would invite me to church, but it was just one of those things where, honestly, bro, even though I had had experiences with God, I don't think up until this point I had really, really had an experience with God, bro. Yeah. And, uh um, I fat. I got shot at the age of eighteen because I thought I was tough trying to fight two dudes at once. I ain't gonna lie, I was getting with them, but they they ended up having more people with them. They ended up coming back and shooting and all this other stuff, and that was a testament because the bullet is still lodged in my shoulder right there, bro. Oh wow! And it's crazy because it's right under the skin. Like God was letting me know, bro, you could have been out of there. You know what I'm saying? Right, like you, right. I could have, you know what I'm saying? Like who, who, nobody has a bullet like right there under the skin, bro. And that was, but you know, being a young, young, ignorant kid from the streets, that make you feel like you really tough now. I right, 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 right. So I ended up, I ended up uh, with, with, with my kid's mom. And uh, I went to church with her one time. And uh, I feel like this was where God started really tugging at me. I used to sit in the back of the church or whatever. And uh, the minister, he called me. He was like, hey, uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but this baby, because I had just had my son, Jaden. Right. He was like, this baby right here is going to help you break the generational curses in your family. Man. I was like, what? I was like, what? And that's when I really, that's the first time I ever really thought about generational curses my dad not being there and all the things that plagued my family. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. even though it really didn't do a lot, it still, it was a seed planted. So uh, fast forward a couple more years, I ended up going to prison for a home invasion. Um, 
they dropped the home invasion down. Bro, I'm telling you, God been working on me, bro. Like right. every every time I went to jail, bro, I got mercy. Like, like I told you, when I first went to jail for the evading arrest and all those felonies, they dropped three felonies. When I went to jail for the home, because this was a real home invasion, bro. Right. We went to dude's house while he was there, held him at gunpoint, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. The look, the judge, some kind of way, they don't find no weapon. It's like basically it was an inside job too. The girl that he was with set him up. So wow. they really couldn't charge us with burglary because we hadn't broken into the house. And it was all kind of technical stuff. So the Lord allowed it to where I ended up just getting a regular burglary for that. That, that really should have been an aggravated home invasion charge. Right. I ended up getting two years for that burglary, bro. The minimum you can get. So God showed me favor then. I got out 2015, bro. I stayed out five months and went back to prison, bro. Like mm -hmm. I was in and out. I was homeless. I was doing drugs. I was just in the loop, bro. Like I was just doing whatever. I didn't have no no drive. I didn't have no vision. I was just going with the flow, trying to be hard in the streets, trying to get approval from people who really don't care about me. Yeah. All of that. Like you just want to be a part of something, especially if you feel like you ain't got no family, you don't belong to nothing. Your identity is missing. And that's basically what it was for me. I didn't I didn't have an identity. I didn't know who I was supposed to be or what I could be or what I was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when I go back to prison this last time in 2015, they first offer is 15 years. I had never faced that much time. Right. So now I'm sitting back because my lawyer had told me I was going to beat it. Even though I was dead, I was dead to the wrong, bro. The laws had caught, caught me like almost in the act. But yeah. They didn't catch me at the scene of the crime. You know what I'm saying? I was always one of the people who try to wiggle their way and find loopholes. But God say, no, nah, it ain't no loopholes this time, fam. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you, you out of chances. You out of strikes. Yeah. Cause, uh, so I went, I went back to my cell in the county. And I really sat down and thought about my future, really, yeah. for the first time, bro. And at this time, I'm like 24 years old. Um, and it was rough, bro. They ended up coming down to 10 years. They ended up coming down to uh, eight. And I told them, drop drop down from the eight. And they were like, Mr. Willis, for the past seven years, you've been in jail for something new. It was right. a new crime every time. It, I mean, not not saying they were all major crimes. A lot of them were misdemeanors, but, but it was still up. looking back. Still yeah. looking back at that, bro. You looking like, man, my life was a mess. My <laughs> life is crazy, bro. Like, it was yeah. Like the last time I went to jail, bro, I was I was on so much ecstasy and cocaine and 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 um uh what I was sipping drink. I was had so much of that in my system. My I had liver splashes on my face. Oh wow! Like my skin, my skin was changing colors. When I looked in the mirror, cause you know in the in the in the mirrors in jail they metal. You look in the mirror, it's like, dang, bro, I look rough. Right. Like I, and that's really where God gave me the name to serve him, bro. I really started. When I got the eight years, I went to prison, bro. Um, and God started working on my heart immediately because there was a lot of things that I had built up over the years that had just been festering. I skipped over this, but back in 2012, no, 2013, my, my daughter's mom got killed by a drunk driver. Man. And that was one of those things that also added fuel to the fire. You know what I'm saying? That I was just you know, messed up about, you know, and uh, it was just a lot of bitterness, unforgiveness I had, uh, my failed marriage, all kind of stuff. And God was just like, if you give me these things, I'm going to prosper you. If you walk in forgiveness, I'm going to prosper you. You know what I'm saying? He started telling me through his word. He started telling me through different people. I was going in prison. I was going to church four days a week. Like, Wow. Initially, you know, when you when you when you go to prison and you in a gang, you got to check in and all of that. I checked in and then I let them know, hey, I'm not I'm not banging, bro. Like I let them know straight up. And by the grace of God, ain't nobody do nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Because they did see that I really was walking it out. And so I was just, bro. I really started getting close to God. And then one night, God came to me in a in a uh, in a vision, bro. I don't know if it was a vision or a dream, but He was like, okay, now your new name is is gonna be the servant the good servant. Right. And I was like, what? I was like, what? And he was like, uh, the good servant. So I woke up in the morning and I'm like, Lord, why did you say the good servant? Cause it ain't nothing good about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm no, I'm not good. 
But then I looked at, looked up in a concordance what the word good meant. I looked in the Bible dictionary what the word meant. And it was just being a faithful steward of what he has given you, being kind, being trustworthy, bearing those fruits of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was like an assignment. It was, it was more than a name. It's an assignment. And, uh, bro, since then, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it hasn't been the same, bro. Since that, that encounter in prison, bro, like, I really laid on my face in my cell, like, night after night, bro, crying out to God, trying to surrender. Because I knew there was a lot of things in my heart I needed to give up. I couldn't grow past where I was at if I didn't forgive those people or, you know, whatever. Right. And so how long, how long did you end up that last bid? How long did you do? I ended up doing two years and seven months on the eight piece. I didn't do the whole eight piece. Right. I did almost three years and I made parole because burglary is a nonviolent crime. And, you know, they really don't, they don't, they don't try to hold you on that. So when, but, when you, when you touched down, you came back out already, you, you're back on the streets. You already were in, in the, when you were in jail, you were serving the Lord already. You became yeah, I was already, bro. I was already serving the Lord. I ended up getting the FI five. Had to go to a halfway house. So when I got out of prison, I went to a halfway house. So I was in Houston, but I was still like halfway in, halfway out. Right. And uh, that also helped me out too, because we had meetings, you know, all kind of stuff to keep you accountable, bro. And when I was in prison, I didn't tell you this, but I had already filled out to go to school for welding. I had right. filled out my FAFSA. So as soon as I got out of prison, I went to welding school. I had already had a plan, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, so when when you hit the ground, was it difficult? Was it like, man, once you hit out there, when you tie back into them, you know what I'm saying? Your family members, yeah. your partners. It, what, was, what was, it, was, it was definitely difficult, bro, because people are used to you. When, you. when you're a certain way, people are used to you being a certain way. They're used to you right. being a hothead. They're used to you being this. And so some of my family members didn't want to come around. me. Some of my family members didn't want nothing to do with me. And I had to earn their trust back. I had to earn my mom's trust back. I had to earn my brother's trust back. Um, and then also show them that Jesus is really in me. Because I have a brother. He's like, man, I remember you used to be like this. I'm like, bro, I ain't like that no more. That person is dead. And right. he was still trying to go around and tell people, hey, man, you know, my, I'm like, bro, I'm not that person. I'm dead. That person is dead, bro. Right. And that's really what God did, bro. He, he taught me how to die to myself. He taught me how to die to my flesh and die to my my identity or my desires or whatever I feel like I want for myself. Right. Because what he has for me is that much better. You know what so I'm saying? Before, fast forward to the beginning, did, were you making music before you found God or once yeah, you? Yeah, I've been making, I started, I wrote my, I think I wrote my first rap at 11 or 12. Um. And I recorded my first song at 14 and pretty much from there, bro, I've been in it. Like I've studied hip hop. Also, um, when I was a youngster, I used to play instruments, bro. I ain't tell no, I don't be telling people this, but I used to play the violin. I played the French horn in middle school. I played the uh the bass. I didn't, yeah, like I didn't play some instruments, bro. So when when we're gonna get that servant piece on the violin. Ain't gonna happen, bro. <laughs> That dude is dead now, Flint. <laughs> nah, nah, bro, I wasn't good, but it just it was just something about music though that I wanted to experience and wanted to play. Like I used to listen to classical music in elementary school. Like that's weird, but I used to do that. You know what I'm saying? I used to listen yeah. to Beethoven and Mozart. Mom used to buy me these little CDs that had like a, a mix of them. You know what I'm saying? So I would listen to that. And I don't know, it's just music I always been more to me than just. It helps you get through stuff, bro. It's like therapy, you know what I'm saying? Like you can uplift a whole generation through music. So right. with my words, it's always been a way of expression for me. And that's what it's always been for me. So yeah, I've always made music in some form, whether it was poetry or violins or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It all evolved into rap. So when when you got out and you decided like, man, I'm gonna switch up making music. When did you decide to make music for the Lord? Um, I'm not gonna lie. When I first got out of prison, I was straddling the fence. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Like, I'm gonna keep it all the way grand. Like, because I knew what I was on, but you also right. had, I also had influences that I, I met a lot of dudes I was in prison with. You know what I'm saying? So we got out, like a lot of us got out together. And so I was trying to collab with certain people and trying to, you know, like, you know, find my way. And right. they were trying to do stuff that I wasn't willing to do. Like, this man ordered fake money off of Amazon, 
for the chains <laughs> and was like, hey, bro, you need to be taking pictures with this and all this. And so I wouldn't own it, fake it till you make it type stuff. I'm like, bro, I'd yeah. rather rap about the struggling, you know what I'm saying, going through it. He like, nah, I'm rapping like I'm really on, even though I'm not, I'm about to make it seem like I'm on. And I wasn't feeling that, bro. I yeah. wasn't, that was lame to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? But that, that even that situation, we fell out. We, me and him don't even talk right now, but it was one of those things that kind of pushed me closer to God. Cause it's yeah. like, okay, if you're not willing to do that, what are you really standing for? Where are your goals at? And God was just like, man, just do it for me. And so right. that's when I started like, and it was this all of this happened in less than a year of me getting out. So all yeah. of this is happening in 2018. And so 2019, you know, I'm still finding my foot and I'm still learning because even though I used to, even in prison, bro, I used to write rhymes. I wrote like 200 songs. But they all wasn't, they all wasn't, they all wasn't, you know, God. They some of them were godly, you know what I'm saying? Like No Van Glory, one of the single, the next single we about to drop. I wrote that actually in prison in 2017. I wrote that yeah. song in prison. And that's why it hit it hits for me because I know where I was at when I wrote that song. I know what I meant when I wrote that song. I was in my lowest place and I really was telling God, you're gonna get the glory. No vain glory, you know. Right. And um, yeah, bro, it's it's just a beautiful thing, bro, to see me getting out of prison in 2018 and fast forward two or three years later. And God is using me on a Christian hip hop platform in the city and, you know, across the country. It's amazing, bro. It's a blessing. So when you're in prison, you're going to, to uh, uh, Soto say you homie out here with the fake money. <laughs> man, nah, for real though, man. I can't see oh. the comments. Yeah, nah, you won't be able to see the comments. But uh, yeah, he, yeah, it was the fake money, bro. It was like a, it was, it was like a, it was like a. Um, I had to check where my moral compass was at. What was I really willing to do to be right. successful? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah actually, like, what are you really? And I wasn't, I wasn't really willing to do all of that, bro. I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't and really willing to do all that, bro. Stro said you were out here playing. He said, "Boy, was I here playing real life Grand Theft Auto." <laughs> <laughs> we're crazy fires of my boys um so when when all this was happening right let's because if i stay in these comments i won't ever get out of uh <laughs> when you were in prison you already was practicing submission you submitted under somebody was it somebody that ran all the meetings how does that work as a church in prison i've never well um we have volunteers that come from the outside world so these are free world guys regular guys who come and volunteer their time and sewing to us every week. Right. We had a brother named Brady, Brother Rudy who would come every week. Brother Sam would come every week. And these guys I still talk to till this day. They're mm -hmm. actually trying to help me get back inside to come back into the prisons and, and speak to guys myself. But yeah. yeah, we have just regular guys, regular volunteers, bro, who cared enough about us to show up every week. Cause these dudes wasn't obligated to come see no prisoners and you know what I'm saying? And so guys like that, they inspired me, bro. And they showed me what being faithful was to God. They showed me what really having a heart for people was, bro. Because I think before this, I didn't, even when I was doing crime, I didn't look at people as people. I just looked at them as whatever. Yeah. But I didn't realize that when I broke into somebody's house, later on down the line, these people would come home and it would affect them mentally forever. Like, you're not thinking like that when you're committing crimes or you're dealing drugs. You're just thinking, hey, I'm getting this. I'm getting to it. But when I started really looking at people from a people standpoint, I could no longer even do the things I used to do, bro. I get paranoid if I try to steal anything out of Walmart, any of that. I can't. Boy, it ain't the same, bro. Got to pay for it. Got paranoid. <laughs> I get paranoid. I can't do none of that because at the end of the day, I know that I, I know the I, I know I know the game. I know it's all a right. it's all a trap. I know it's a trap now. You know what I'm saying? And, like, and that's 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 uh, keeping it. Apart. <laughs> so when you got out and you got to make a transition to submitting yourself underneath somebody to grow. You know what I'm saying? Discipleship and all that. Was it hard getting plugged in out here? Where did you plug yourself in? It was it was hard. It was really hard. Want to know why? Because I went through four different churches, bro. Come on, man. Speak on it. I really was trying hard. Like I wasn't, I wasn't half stepping bro. Cause I knew where I had come from. I knew where I was just coming out of. So I went to this one church um, and he was a pastor 
of the family, he ended up doing insurance fraud, stealing from his own family members in the church. We left that church. Um, and then there was another church I had went to where it wasn't really that much of a problem. It was a problem because we were trying to, the, the church is real small and the pastor who was over, he was an elderly man and he wasn't really trying to do the things that we were trying to do to help the church grow, like go on live on Facebook and things like yeah. that. So it was really more so a conflict of interest. Like it was like, they really weren't interested in growing. So, I mean, the great commission is go forth and make disciples. Yes, so sir. if you ain't doing that, then I mean, what are you doing? So right. that was kind of where that was at. But, um, needless to say, bro, I actually found a church home that I go to. Um, and it was hard for me, but I think just your that, you have to stay plugged into God more than the church because church is, is a beautiful place and it's a beautiful place to grow, but it, you have to, you have to have a relationship outside of anything. You have to have a personal time or your relationship is going to crumble slowly, but surely it might take a year or two, but if you're not plugged in, if you're not being held accountable, then it's nothing. And then I plugged in with Trey nine and went through his disciple, the streets training. And so that also, gave me a lot of tools to preach the gospel and um my identity in Christ things like that so yeah bro going through those programs and me being blessed enough to have met Trey Nine in the county and then we get out and need link up and so Trey he was he was very instrumental in me growing spiritually um people like John Jenkins who who would invest time in me it just God blessed me with a nice group of brothers. Yeah, he blessed me with a nice group of brothers. But you also have to make yourself available. Right. Because to be accountable, you have to be available. You can't, you can't, you can't be accountable if you're not willing to open up with that time. So I think you just have to have that willingness. It's not really hard, bro. It's just you have to be humble. And you yeah. have to really want it. Because if you're not really humble, it's easy to get offended and run off and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But just, just knowing where you're at. How, how hard is it or how hard was it for you being out here, coming across some of the people that you already knew? You know what I'm saying? They see you out here not doing it for, for the Lord and the people you used to rap with. They ever come and tell you, man, hey, let's, let's link up. Let's do something. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'm not going to lie, bro. When it comes down to the game, that was my life. Like, right. in Alien Form Park Crips is a big, is a big deal. Like, they they really a big name. Also because of the 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 uh the prostitution that goes on on Bissonette, like they kind of control that territory. It's a lot of stuff that goes in with that. And those people were my family, my life. That's what I felt like. Like I was pushing the turf everywhere I went. So for me to have to give that identity up and then people seeing me and they looking at me funny and they calling me a sellout and it it kind of hurt at first. I'm not gonna lie, because these are the people I'm trying to speak to. These are the people I want to change their life, but I was rejected. But it was also a mixture. Like you got people that reject it and then you got people that love it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a mixture, bro. You got to know that what you really believe is what you believe and it's for a purpose because if you go on, I mean, it was hard, bro, because like I said, my identity was with them. But once I really re realized my identity was in Christ, it became easier, but it was definitely a struggle. It was a struggle. And, and even with the music, um, it was still guys coming up to me for that. But as they saw what I did, they got to respect it more and more. Yeah, and that's, that was going to lead me to my next question, bro. When you got out and you already, you said you laid it down when you was in prison, right? You told them, like, man, I ain't banging no more. Or did you already let them know out here that? Well, that yeah, I, yeah in, prison, I, in prison, I had, I had basically let them know where I was at. But, I mean, that's a whole different that's different than that. I didn't really tell none of my homies in the world that though. So when I came home, people were still expecting me to be like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Ooh, and you know, I'm going to be honest to a certain degree. I still was dibbling, dabbling, doing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But God just, he just made it, he just made it clear that he, that's not what he wanted for me. Like I said, he brought the right people around me. Right. And he just, he just shepherded me. He led me into the right place, bro. You know, and, and what, what can you say to those that may be watching that are struggling with that too, dibbling, dabbling with the... Uh... I think I think, I think, think the biggest thing, bro, is accountability, bro. You got to be honest with somebody. First, you got to be honest with yourself. 
And you have to be vulnerable. You, you have to be willing to be vulnerable with people, even if it's people you don't know, because you can't heal from stuff that you hide. If you hide this or that, you can't heal from it. And if you really want to grow past where you are, you're going to have to give somebody else, Jesus, control of your life, because ultimately what you're doing doesn't work. It hasn't worked. So you just have to give up control. Giving up that control is, is the hardest thing to do, but it's the best thing to do, man. Tell now, me. You said, you said something vulnerable. You said be vulnerable. As a man, though, you know what I'm saying? Especially living the life that you did. You've watched your mom go through shelters. You've watched your mom, you know, you say that you, you watched her get beat on. You've seen it to the point where knives were drawn. So how, coming from a backstory like that, now you've you've done people wrong too firsthand. So you've seen what robbery. So how can you be vulnerable and open up your heart to someone, especially in discipleship programs that may, you know, because some people feel like discipleship programs are always, only here to use people. You know what I'm saying? But how can you hmm. be vulnerable from coming from all that? You allowed yourself to be vulnerable to be able to grow. And that's and like I said, bro, that comes just from that real encounter with God. It's unexplainable. Like, I don't see vulnerability. I've never seen vulnerability as a weakness. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, even when I was doing my thing in the streets, I still was a weirdo. I still was, I'm not gonna sit here and like I act like I was just the toughest guy out there. You know what I'm saying? I, I did my thing, you know what I'm saying? I thought I was hard. Some people thought I was hard, some people thought I was I wasn't hard. You right. know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I always felt like you don't lose value for being open and honest with your feelings because we all feel whether we want to suppress it or not. I know people get taught, well, I ain't supposed to show nobody me crying or whatever. I mean, that still don't make me believe that you don't cry or you have never cried. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's just, you got to be real, bro. I think they just start with being real with yourself because if you starting to hear yourself confess things, you're like, okay, I think I believe this. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff that start coming out your mouth. And it's like, man, if, if you come out and say, hey, bro, I was really in the wrong with the way I was thinking. Right. If you say that out of your mouth, in your mind, you already got to be, you know, cooking up some stuff like, man, I need to change the way I am. Come on. Kind of like where the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If your heart posture is right, then you already know. Me being being vulnerable it's not going to, it's not a negative, you know, a lot of men feel like that, but it's really not. Now some, you can't, I'm not saying you're supposed to go around and tell everybody your business, right. but there are people you need to be a hundred percent transparent with. You know what I'm saying? There are people and, and that's just for growth. So with, what brought on the fact of, well, no, before I go to that one, my bad, I'm bypassing this. Um, when you put your feet into the game, you, you put your toe into the water, who was the first person you, linked up with as far as me jumped in chh and and out the gate was like man i want to work with that dude well originally i started chh i started doing a little bit of chh back when i was uh, back in 2011 2012 okay. a guy named Derek Derek chisholm a lot of people know him in the game here og furious he kind of started bringing me around i'm lying even before that a guy named denzel jamaican brother a lot of people know him too he brought me out to Austin with him and put me on stages with him at the age of 16. Okay. And so it was one of those things where like you had these guys that would come up and just lead me along the way. But when I got out of prison, um, my brother, Joshua Jenkins, Joshua 168, um, Joshua 168, I, um, I linked up with him and we started doing some stuff. Like I said, John Jenkins, he started bringing me out to lots of love on Saturdays. And uh, speak, speaking of John Jenkins, man, who's the best domino player you ever played? John, he all right. He decent. <laughs> he got to play me in person, though. See, he, me and John, we play on the app all the time, and he be on my top. I ain't going to lie, but I'm probably one of the best domino players he ever played, too. I'm sure he'll tell you that. He one of the best I ever played, though. Don't get it twisted. He got some. Ashley said it's her. Cap. <laughs> so once well, once you started doing all that, you came out, out of prison now. You you getting serious. What is is it is it now the point in, in time that you're really getting serious with your music? Or 
have you? Yeah, because you know, when I first got out, I was just doing these little challenges. I was like, I did a soldier boy challenge. I did like this net. But honestly, when I was putting together my first project, I didn't really know what the world of Christian hip hop in Houston looked like. I didn't even know what the world of Christian hip hop looked like, period. Right. I didn't know that I was supposed to not say this or not say that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just was putting together how I felt about Jesus. That was it. Yeah. I didn't know it was the politics involved and all of this. So when I that that first project is really me fresh out of prison. A lot of those songs were written in prison. Some of those songs were secular what, songs that were turned over to cr the, Christian songs. Project, man, so the people can check you out. It's called Cornucopia. And the meaning behind that is basically like Cornucopia means horn of plenty. It's that thing you see on the table at Thanksgiving with the fruit coming out of it yeah. and all of that. That's what a Cornucopia is. So it's basically God being our provider, our fruit of our horn of plenty, our Cornucopia throughout the pandemic. That's basically what that was about. Like, it, I dropped it like in 2020, right in the prime of uh, the COVID pandemic. And um, needless to say, people liked it. So, I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, people liked it. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about no likes or none of that. I just right. put it out. Cause honestly, I told myself that if I didn't drop a project before I was 30, I wasn't gonna rap no more. <laughs> that's See. being real. My, my first time meeting you, I, I, I think it was at the Von Juan Car Show uh -huh. at Fellowship Houston. I got to meet yeah. you there. I was still on the ropes of the podcast thing, like, man, should I do it? And then that's when I had a conversation with Anthony H. And he's like, man, run it, bro. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I did it. And then I was like, man, I saw you on stage, bro. You was, you had a different type of energy, bro. You was everywhere. You was on this side. You was on that side. You was going back and forth. Yeah. I was like, man, that dude right there is different. So I, mm -hmm. I talked to Anthony while you was performing and I was like, say, bro, who's that? And he's like, oh man, he's down with it, bro. You know what I mean? So That's and then now that I, I met you, bro, and I started listening to your music a little bit more because I ain't know who you were. So I had to, you know what I'm saying, do my research. And man, a lot of your music speaks to me, bro, too. You, you're anointed mm -hmm. and your gift, you, what you do is no vain glory, bro. You you can see that. And mm -hmm. when we release that song, they're going to be they're going to be blown away by that. But your new project that came up what what inspired the name of it? Um, Rods. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm gonna be honest. I heard it. I heard it on a TV show or something like that. He, <laughs> and he said it. He said it. He said it like the way he said it though, because he didn't say it like like real ones don't sit still. Anybody could say that, but the way he said it was like almost convicted. Yeah. It's like man, real ones don't sit still, and I was like, hmm. Cause I was going through some stuff at that time. Like I ain't like when I was, when I, when COVID first hit, bro, I was having panic attacks. I ain't tell nobody this bro, but I was John Jenkins. He watching, he probably noticed. Cause I told him, bro, I probably went to the hospital like 10 times in one month. <laughs> like no cap. I thought I was having a heart attack. All kind of like, I was dealing with anxiety, bro. Real yeah. bad. And it was just one of those things where COVID was like making a lot of things unsure. A lot of stuff that got canceled. A lot, you know what I'm saying? So I really didn't know, like, you know, it was weird for me. So Roz, it, it speaks to, to people about not quitting, not giving up. That's kind of why it's a football theme too, because yeah. football is one of those physical contact sports. So real ones don't sit still. It's just keep on going through matter, no matter what. It's about perseverance. It's about not sitting still, not quitting, not getting stagnant, basically. That's what the meaning of it is. You know, so that's basically what Rod stands for. And then once you hear the football skits on there, because all the skits come from the show called uh, Last Chance University. And Last Ch Chance University is on Netflix. It's a football show where a lot of mess ups go and they still get a chance to make it to the next level, either NFL or uh, D1 sports. Right. And so that's also a testament of second chances. So I feel like that that all ties in, bro. And it was so dope to me. I just hope that it speaks to everybody the way it spoke to me, man. Because oh, it is. I, I got to hear a couple songs. I mean, you got to release one of them already. Uh, what is it's yeah. better, right? Better with yes, fire. Sir. And I mm -hmm. got to, well, my kids got to see you performing. I didn't, cause uh, mm -hmm. and uh, my kids, my kids got to see it, bro. But I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Cause they had me off in that room back there. I missed a lot of the performance. They they had me tucked away. No, I'm just playing. I was you doing, was on your uh, job though. You was doing man. your thing though. You yeah, was, you it was, it was fun, job. man. I had I had great great time at that at that event. And uh, yeah. so 
what what's coming up new for you before we dive into this next topic i'm gonna give you the, the opportunity to share with the people uh you say you got a website coming up huh because when we dive in the- yeah there, okay um come back to that okay we have um like i said the label i'm associated with blood bought music uh blood bought music ministries um we just launched our new website bloodbought.net now anybody who goes on there and makes a purchase of twenty dollars or more, you can make a purchase of at least $20. Your name will be automatically entered to win two PS, either one of two PS5s or the Xbox Series X, the new black one. We have those available. We 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 got we got more, but that's all we starting off with. We're gonna see how y'all act, and then that's gonna base what we do in the future off of that. But yeah, man, it's free Xbox, you know what I'm saying, PS5 for 20 bucks. Can't, can't really beat that, you know what I'm saying? Right. And you say that y'all not giving one a one away, y'all giving two away. And two then away. an Xbox. So man, and y'all it's go gonna be check shipped out. to your house for free. They're gonna be shipped straight to your house. Y'all go check out that uh website. Uh what is it? Bloodbotmusic.net. Come on, man. Yeah. And you say something about some new merch y'all dropping too? Yeah, it's a bunch the merch is up there. It's crazy. It's all kind of merch, man. It's it's crazy. We got all kind of stuff, hoodies. Uh, jumpsuits, warm ups, beanies, all kind of stuff, man. T shirts, yeah. So, shout out to my boy It's a Rebel for that because he he put that website together by himself. So, shout, shout yeah, out, man, to him. don't get at me. We gotta, we gotta talk, yeah. Uh, I do got a question though in the comments saying when you're gonna drop something with that Stro guy. I, I don't, I'm not too, I'm not too familiar who they're talking about. Me and Stro got a couple things in the works. Um, he. He's definitely going to be on my next uh, Rods, too. I'm going to try to try to drop Rods, too, this year. He definitely going to be on there. That's my brother, man. I love him. That's my boy. So, man, that's that's awesome. So We already got some music actually recorded, two songs, but we just trying to get everything right. Man, so, I ain't heard nothing. Ain't nothing came to my email, so I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe it till I see it. <laughs> yeah, we got two things recorded, so it's, it's just timing. You know what I'm saying? Because I like to make sure everything is right. Even right. though I love to, I love to work with brothers, I I, don't, I ain't got no chip on my shoulder about working with nobody. But I just like to make sure it's done right. That's it, and it's a moment, it's special. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna work. Let's just make sure it's done right. Cause it's a lot of people who be sending me stuff that they recorded on their phone, and that ain't happening, bro. I'm not jumping on nothing like that. Right. If right. it's a rough draft, you want to go to the studio? Cause I look at it like Cain and Abel. Cain gave Cain gave God whatever. Abel gave no, God man. his best Take it offering. Down. He Break gave God down. his best offering, so I'm going to give God my best. It might not be the best, but it's going to be my best for sure. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Those two names, man, that you that you, uh, that you you spoke of that said that, that one of them brought you out there to, to Austin, I'm going to need you to get them to me, man, because I'm going I'm to have to get in contact with them. But, yeah, Denzel Finley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's the big homie. And then uh, my next topic, bro, before we... In in the the podcast, man, is how important is spiritual warfare to you, bro? And and being because we already covered discipleship, we already covered. I got two more things we're gonna come, we're gonna get and before we get out. It's uh, we'll go ahead and do unity first. Okay, unity. spiritual. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something about spiritual spiritual warfare. That's another thing that God uh, he really opened my eyes to in prison. I don't know if you ever heard of this book, but it's a book called He Came to Set the Captives Free. Man. And it's about she used to this lady, she used to be the bride of Satan. She was the most powerful witch in America, in the Western Hemisphere. And wow. she gave her life to Christ. And it talks about how this lady really fought for her, bro. And this lady really fought to save her. And so that book alone started opening my eyes to spiritual warfare and just like I said, bro, God would also give me a lot of visions and dreams, and a lot of my dreams would come true. Like, right. God would show me stuff before it happened, and then it would happen, and I'd be like, so that those patterns started training me to look into the spirit and start looking at stuff from an unnatural eye. And yeah. spiritual warfare is so powerful because you got things like strongholds that, that have taken years to build up and set root in your mind. Come on. And so it takes time to kind of work those things away. If you built these strongholds, these strongholds are places where the devil have fortified where he can operate at. You know what I'm saying? So it takes time to knock those strong strongholds down. And that's what I really kind of began to do in prison. So spiritual warfare, like Joyce Meyer said, a lot of it is the battlefield of the mind, but it's 
it's definitely important, bro. It's definitely important. So with you saying all that, you took a whole you took a whole topic and just broke it down so smoothly. I think that that covers most of everything I was gonna ask. Um, <laughs> but when you jumped in the game, man, how how is the did you expect it to be so unified? Have you seen outside of Houston? CHH as far as Christian hip hop or is it just I'm not gonna lie it's 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 I ain't gonna lie bro CHH bro you gotta come with it now I mean it's it's just that simple there's so many talented guys that God is using I mean it's just I mean you can be effective but just make sure you come with your best because even though we say it's not a it's not really about competition it's not really all about talent God can use anybody but just make sure you're coming with it because it's people that's coming with it. You know what I'm saying? It's right, people that's right. hungry. And so um, in Houston, I've seen nothing but unity, bro. Like from the day, from day one, when I first started fire, he's held me down. Even when, I mean, they, they don't, he don't have nothing to gain from saying, you know what I'm saying? He believe in me, people like that. And so those type of people are always give whatever to just like John Jenkins, man. Uh, he didn't have no reason to reach out. A lot of these guys, Trey Nine, they didn't have no Vaughn, Vaughn won. Vaughn won. He didn't have no reason to, you know, bring me out to his church or do a song with me or anything like that. And these, a lot of these guys are, you know, who we would consider OGs or whatever. They didn't have no reason to, to do anything for me. So um, those type of things always, you know, always sit right with me. And therefore, um, I always look out to where I can extend the hand back to somebody else who might need my hand. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. You, you know what I'm saying? You got to be taking it serious. But yeah. if I can help you out, bro, I'm definitely going to help. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So I got, uh, looking at the comments, bro, we're fixing, um, we're going to do this new thing. Uh, anybody that want to ask servant a question in the comments right now, I'll hit them with them. I ain't taking no ask, questions. No, <laughs> I'll I ask him the questions. I know I got <laughs> one right here from uh, VIC. He says, uh, kick a freestyle. Man, hold on. I'm going to go strong. Eight times south side riding on chrome. Yeah, man, that's all I'm going to get. A couple bars. Yep. <laughs> and then he said for the rest of it, you got to drop You got to drop something in his cash app. <laughs> VIC crazy. I love that bro. Man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna tell you a quick story about VIC, bro. I love that brother. Because he checked me one day. He really checked me. Come on. And he he did it smoothly. It wasn't in no nasty way, but I was about to speak up on somebody. And this is a, a, a well-known person in Christian hip hop. And I was like, man, he ain't saving no souls. He ain't doing this. VIC was like, man, you don't know what that man doing. <laughs> I was like, you, you right. I don't know what he's doing. And from oh. that day forward, I learned to watch what I say about people because oh, yeah, yeah, you don't he, know what you're doing. Make an appearance on Get Straight to It, but he'd be, he be running. He ran yeah, at, you know. at, the, at the DJ Kool-Aid concert. <laughs> he owed me one. Uh, we got a question out here. It says, when you, when you and the twins going to do a track together? Man, I'm anytime. Anytime. I got number of respect for the twins, bro. And they can spit. They, Boy, they, they be Hollywood though. Fire. You gotta get in line. I heard they wait. I heard they got people in line like for yeah, two they years got before they drop they a track. Got some. Twins, cold. I, I got number respect for them, them boys, man. And like I said, them the twins, bro. They ain't nothing but love. So it's, it, it, it really it makes me feel good when people show me love. So I gotta show love. It's only right. It's man. only right. Derek uh, Chisholm said. I think I hope I said your last name right. If I didn't, bro, forgive me. Uh, mm -hmm. He said the servant will be one of the new school leaders. Wow. I'm trying mm. to tell you, that's facts, bro, because you you got a good head on your shoulders, man, and you ain't, like you said, you, one thing I, I that stood out about this interview, bro, is when you said vulnerability, not a lot of men will say that. I've heard women, yeah. you know what I'm saying, about being vulnerable, you know, in order to go to that next level, but to hear it out of a man to say that's the first thing you got to do in order to, I mean, not a lot of people will say that. They won't say that. They, they'll feel it. They'll know it's the right thing to do. But they ain't gonna come out on record and put it on wax. This this why I'm this why I'm gonna say vulnerability, right? Because I used to be a hothead. I used to like to fight, bro. I broke right. my hand twice fighting. Like I used to lo love to scratch. I didn't got my nose broke, all that. Like I used to love that. But one day God just He had took that anger away from me, and so I went to reach for it and it wasn't there. And I was like, Wait a minute, right? So when that anger is gone, you deal with the other feelings. So. Really, I was only angry because my feelings was hurt. Right. 
Right. And the anger was a defense mechanism for me being hurt. Come you know on. what I'm saying? So that's really that's really why I say, Vaughn, you got to break yourself down. You got to get to the root of it. You know what I'm saying? You got to be honest with yourself, bro. Because all that macho man ran, man, come on, bro. Half the people that's walking around like that, they just hurt. Yeah. Come on, you got to speak on that. Because a that's lot of people is, speak like, on the fact that they were, they're, they're good at masking what they make hurt look good. You know, say yeah. to say, I'm not saying like, good. I ain't saying, you know what I'm saying, they, they put it on, but they make it look good into the fashion of, man, this is the way I am because it's the way I am. When in reality, you got something you're dealing with within your heart that you don't want to speak with another man about because you may have been hurt earlier in your life and you ain't never gotten over that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or even when they're hurt by females, now you got trust issues and you feel like everybody's going to do you that wrong. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and that's... And, and that's where the vulnerability comes because you have to be vulnerable to open yourself, open yourself up to love again. Come you on. have to open or you have to be vulnerable to let your guard down to trust. You right. know what I'm saying? Even Shakespeare said it's better to love and loss than to not have loved at all. Man. So I mean, it's it's just it's vulnerability is the key to it, bro. It really is. If you want to be tough, you ain't gonna be able to grow. Which is what it is. Fire said, keep pressing, my bro. John Jenkins said. When oh man, I ain't when Hopkins and uh Izzy and Servant Gun. Let me see, hold up. Going to gonna all do a song together. I ain't saying those those names that I can't pronounce because I'm not finna be be the one that's name up. I don't even, know. I don't even uh, know who that is. It's uh man, let I'm gonna have to read you the comment, bro, because it's I know it, the last name is Hopkins, the first name of the first the next one is Izzy, and then uh than you. So, oh, I kneel. I there kneel. You go. I'm not good with names, bro, and I'm not fixing to try and butcher nobody's name on here. Me and I kneel got like four songs together. That's my brother, man. He cold. Man, hold but on. we can. We definitely need to do something new soon. Yeah, I kneel. He, he, he. Man, that dude, that's talented. I love his heart too, cause he's super humble. I love him, man. I love him. So, what was the main thing before we get out, bro? What was the main thing that was the hardest thing for you to do? As far as the transition, the identity, yeah, bro. bro. Yeah, because, identity. See, I'm not gonna do, I ain't gonna do nobody's name like that, bro. Yeah, identity, bro. That that's the number one thing that I and I'm gonna come out with a project, probably not this year because I got a lot of stuff coming out this year. But next year, identity crisis, bro. Mark my words, identity crisis, because that's what the major thing is. Identity, I. We don't know our identity as people. We come up with a lot of us come up with our fathers. A lot of us come up looking at social media for identity. And so we feel inadequate. And it's just knowing your identity apart from what others feel you should be and knowing that who you are is, is, is special. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's it, bro. It's embracing who you are and knowing that God loves you no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Because he does. And it's, and it's like you said, bro, before you can trust people, you got to be able to put your trust in Jesus. Because some people hop in it and like, man, well, this dude is showing me the roads. This dude is doing this. Dude, dude. But then when that dude falls, you you see yourself months later falling, too, because you put all your trust in that man. Yeah. That and, and, man. And, and, and it can get it can get like that because. It don't matter who it is, bro. We all human. You can you can look at somebody and put them on a pedestal, and then they'll do something. You like, whoa. So if you basing your faith off of that, man, you 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 are already dead. You are already dead water. And that's why I say I I I love the fact that God actually gave me that real experience with Him in prison because it's something undeniable. The visions and the dreams and the people He sent my way. It was so much stuff that I it couldn't it couldn't not be God. Because it came from so many different places. If it was just one isolated place, and I'd be like, hmm. But God would send people my way that didn't even know each other and, and pour into me and confirm things. And, you know, so I can sit here and talk about that all day long. But, yeah, bro. Man, well, we appreciate your time serving. And, and where can they go get this the new, new website y'all just launched, bro? One more time. Uh, Bloodboughtmusic.net. Blood um, y'all check out the merch on there. Check out the stuff. Win y'all a free Xbox or PlayStation 5. Only got to spend $20. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's it. Got a lot of crazy where, stuff dropping this year. Where can they find anything from you if they want to get get together with you, man, maybe get a feature from you or something? Where can the they music is on all streaming platforms. Uh, my booking info is, is on there. Um, 
And yeah, man, the servant IG you got a servant page on uh on uh Facebook, and also I have uh the servant blood bar music on TikTok, Twitter, the servant. So y'all can find me on all, all those platforms. And y'all don't forget to go order better. It's out now on all platforms. It's that all fire. Boy fire. Um man, so y'all go check that out. And if if y'all feel like, man, look, y'all need some prayer, hit me up, bro. Y'all feel God's mm -hmm. tugging on y'all's heart. Y'all just don't know which direction to step in. If y'all in Houston, I got plenty of brothers I can put y'all in connection with. If y'all out here in the Fort Bend County area, my church, Windsor Glory Church International, we open you, we welcome you with open arms. Y'all come and get some love from us. we we'll love on y'all. We got service at 1030 on Sundays and then Wednesdays at 7. Y'all come check us out, man. I love y'all to life, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to get straight to it. Thank you, servant, for your time, bro. And sure. man, can't wait to check out that new project you got. And y'all stay tuned because that uh no van glory finna come out real soon huh hey yes sir that's gonna be an exclusive on get straight to it come on man y'all heard it here so stay tuned sir you can stay on just a moment bro god bless y'all yes, thank y'all for tuning in